Sixteen-year-old Lewis Wilson sat in his sixth grade class in 1916. Pausing for a moment from being the class rowdy to hear the teacher tell of another young, poor, grimy boy named Dick Whittington. For once, the hot-tempered bull-neck boy who pulled girls' pigtails and poured ink into coat pockets was actually sitting still and listening. His grimy hands were folded. He was mesmerized by how Dick Whittington, poor and orphaned in England long ago, went on to become the mayor of London and beloved far and wide for his big heart. Lewis perhaps recalled his own mother's death when he was only seven. But that moment when he met Dick Whittington, his life was vastly changed for the better. And, just like Dick Whittington, he resolved never to let anyone make fun of his rough ways and dirty clothes again. In fact, in 1929, the year before a Wilson or Hack Wilson hit 56 homers and a still record 190 runs batted in for his Chicago Cubs fans, he told a reporter that all of his baseball career started on that day long ago when he first heard the tale of Dick Whittington. In this old story, young Dick is hungry, scorned, searching for his path in life and losing hope when he hears the nearby town church bells chiming prophetically and just for him, the message, turn again, Dick Whittington, thrice Lord Mayor of London. And sure enough, it all came to pass. Hack Wilson told the reporter, I think the old poem, Turned Again Whittington, Lord Mayor, which I learned in school had much to do with my determination to be a Major League Baseball player. I've repeated that line to myself thousands of times. Hack heard that tale ironically at the same tender age that his mother Jenny was when she had him, and he missed her now. She had worked her job to feed them and wasn't around much right up until she died of a burst appendix when Hack was only seven years old. His unmarried father, Robert, worked weekdays and drank weekends in the taverns of Elwood City, their frontier-type town in Pennsylvania. But he would take his son on Sunday outings, at times seeing tipping beer into his son's open mouth at the 20-year hotel bar. Now in the Dick Whittington story, his salvation comes through the kind and wise Mr. Fitzwarren, a wealthy merchant who shows Dick an ingenious way to fame and fortune, using Dick's loved rat-chasing cat and companion, Puss. Well, Hack Wilson's cat was actually a wooden, wonderful baseball bat, any baseball bat, because even when he was 10 years old, he could play baseball like a man. And Connie Wardman, his stepfather and sometimes a good ball player, was fortunately one of the first to see that precious gift wrapped up in this five foot six, 190 pound blacksmith's body, now hardened by long hours of work in the mills. But Wardman pushed Hack towards his destiny, often with a paddle and profanity even though Hack was now strong and then nicknamed Stouts. It was typical 
for Hack to be floating languidly in his favorite quarry lake when Wardman wanted him to run an errand. And like Wardman, Hack, in turn, would take his own red-hot temper, some beer, and his muscle-bound self downtown, picking fights almost at random. In fact, when you saw those veins on Hack's neck standing out and his skin turning red, the smart people disappeared. But Hack discovered one important thing. Everybody loved him madly when he swung his mighty wooden wand, blasting home run balls into distant backyards, into chicken coops, and manure piles. They really liked him when he played good. And he always wanted so much to be liked. <laughs> 